right, welcome everybody. I, I got to say, this is a lot better than last year. Uh, at least most of us are here live, but uh, we're very pleased to have a lot of folks online as well. So thank you for joining us, uh, however you're able to do so. Welcome to the 2021 CEV workshop. Um, again, I'm just excited where most of us are in a room together and, and seeing each other and talking face to face. This is going to be great. Um, this is a hybrid event, so it's going to be a little bit different. Um, we've got WPSU here in the back, in case you're wondering who all the, the folks are in front of other laptops and projectors. So they're going to be streaming everything out live. Um, at the end of the overview, I'll show you where you can go to the uh, Excel events page in case you want to start uh, looking at some of the PDFs. Or later on, we'll have the uh, individual talks, um, the videos archived uh, there as well as on uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, it's the first time we've tried something like this. Uh, many thanks to conferences and institutes and uh, Kelly Driftmeyer in the back for, for all the prep work on this. They've done a few of these things, so it should go pretty smoothly. And at the end of all this, I'd really appreciate uh, feedback from, from everyone as to whether we should keep doing hybrid in the future or not. Um, next year, I'm sure hoping <laughs> more people can be here live, but some folks aren't able to make it for travel reasons. If you want us to keep doing these things hybrid, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can do it, uh, depending on how well things go this year. Um, Okay, a couple of uh, quick housekeeping notes. Uh, there should always be coffee and uh, other light snacks in the back there. Uh, lunch is going to be in uh, the Heritage Hall room, so you go out the doors to your right, and there'll be uh, events uh, staff to kind of guide you there, but it's just a straight shot to the back. Uh, along the way, you'll see restrooms to your left, so everything is, is over to your right there. Um, Okay, I think that's it for housekeeping. Of course, you know, wear your masks unless you're eating or, or drinking. That's Penn State policy. So let's give you a quick overview of uh, Penn State as well as uh, the CAV. Uh, thanks to uh, George Lassert, our, our former uh, chair for uh, this uh, slide. I've updated a little bit, but not much. This is just the, uh, the Penn State overview. We've been around a long time, obviously. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, it's not just University Park. We've got campuses all over the, uh, the state. A lot of faculty, a lot of staff, <laughs> a lot of graduate students, and uh, we're typically over a billion dollars in research annually across the entire university. So it's, it's a big place and a lot of stuff going on. Uh, here are, uh, are your CAV managers. Uh, that's me up on the top. Um, quick mask removal, just in case you want to know what I look like, but otherwise look for the blue mask and the blue shirt. And uh, the associate director is Cliff Lissenden. He is at ESM. I actually work at uh, the Applied Research Lab. Uh, I've got a couple of coordinators. Diane Beerley uh, should be here. She works in ESM as well, so a lot of the students have uh, interacted with her. And then uh, Kelly, I've introduced you to, uh, she runs conferences and institutes for us and uh, really puts the whole thing together along with her staff. Uh, the C of E is divided into uh, nine specialty groups. Uh, a lot of them have been around for a long time, and a couple of them have been uh, fairly new arrivals. And I've tried to split them into different uh, sub-areas. Uh, this is the area I'm calling basic physics. And so along with directing the CAV, I also direct the uh, vibration, structural vibration acoustics group. Uh, Mike Johnson runs uh, flow-induced noise and vibration. And then uh, Vic Sparrow uh, does uh, propagation radiation. And those really span a lot of different areas. And so you'll notice in some of the talks, and if you read our newsletter, more on that in a minute, there is overlap right, throughout these groups. You, know, you use these basic physics in uh, sort of some specialty areas. So here's what I'm calling applications. So Jose Palacios runs our adaptive structures and uh, noise control group. Uh, Carl and Cliff co-lead systems and structures health management. And then uh, Ed Smith, Rotorcraft Acoustics, that's been around a long, long time. There is a uh, center of excellence here at Penn State for Rotorcraft, the Vertical Lift Research Center of Excellence. Uh, sponsored by uh, U.S. government as well as uh, U.S. Um, rotorcraft uh, industry. And then I've got uh, emerging areas. These are sort of hot topics. Uh, Amanda Hanford's been running the acoustic uh, metamaterials group for a few years now. It started off as just acoustic materials, and then you know, metamaterials has just been exploding in popularity. And so we added that uh, to the, uh, the title. And in fact, most of the research you'll see in that group is, is metamaterials. Uh, biomedical acoustics is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The main focus we've uh, got here at Penn State is on a lot of imaging stuff, and uh, Julie Simon leads that group, and there's a lot of diverse faculty from a lot of different departments so that contribute to that. And just last year, uh, in response to just the obvious overwhelming interest in this area, we started up an artificial intelligence 
and uh, machine learning group that uh, Danning Wong and Carl Reichard uh, co-run. You'll see a lot of machine learning and AI used in Carl and Cliff's group in health monitoring. That's just a big application area for that. So again, a little bit of overlap between groups, but that, that's fine. So. And you'll get updates from every group head at uh, the workshop. Uh, a huge part of our program in acoustics and vibration is the graduate school. Um, the acoustics uh, program at Penn State, it's the only graduate program in acoustics in uh, the U.S. And uh, very diverse, very large. Uh, Dr. Sparrow will uh, be here later on to give you an overview of that. And a big part of that that might be of interest to a lot of our corporate and government sponsors is our distance education program. So you can get a Master of Engineering in acoustics and take all the same classes that the resident students take who are going for master's and PhD degrees. If you really want to try to get a master's of science or a PhD remotely, it can be done. Uh, there are success stories. You do have to spend a little bit of time here on campus to fulfill the residency requirements, but if that is something of interest to you, we're flexible. We can work with you on stuff like that. Uh, so this is all on the acoustics uh, website, so I encourage you to, to have a look there if you're interested. If you don't want a degree, and just want to take a course of interest because you've got work demands that need it. Uh, we're always offering uh, distance education courses, usually in the order of four to six a semester. Here's what we're doing now. Uh, if you go to the website, there should be, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, list for spring on there as well. But there's a broad list of courses available to you. <coughs> A lot of what you'll see here today is going to be you know, kind of quick overviews, but if you're interested in more detail, I encourage you to have a look at our website and uh, in particular, grab our current newsletter. Uh, the engineering program, uh, communications folks help us put that out and they just do a great job. So it's, it's really nice. Some feature stories and uh, as well as updates from each of the groups. So we've got uh, usually around two or three feature stories each year and you've got these things archived for, for many, many years in, in, the, in the past. Uh, as well as the, the group updates, of course. One of the things we put on our uh, website is our uh, student thesis database. So we try to keep up with this and uh, put any student thesis that's got anything to do with acoustics and vibration on our site. Uh, it's searchable, so you can look for keywords, you know, metamaterials, health monitoring, whatever you like, and uh, theses will pop up. Most of the recent ones have PDFs, so this is going straight to the Penn State Library System. So when you click on a link, You'll get the abstract, the advisors, the student, and uh, you'll also be able to download the PDF as well. So, so free information for you uh, from our uh, graduate students. So you're encouraged to, to have a look at that. One of the things we added last year out of necessity was a YouTube page. And uh, that started off from last year's workshop, which was completely online, all Zoom. Not a very satisfactory experience, but it, it was okay. Um, I'm much happier with a hybrid approach and, and people in, in seats, but, but it worked out all right. So uh, we, uh, if you go to last year's workshop, you'll find a whole bunch of pre-recordings as well as a couple of live roundtables we did. And we've been trying to migrate our seminar series to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, that's having mixed success. We had a decent amount of seminars last semester. A lot of people willing to do Zoom. I think there's some Zoom fatigue going on now. So we've got, uh, actually we haven't had a seminar yet. So that's, that's our fault. It's just we feel strange asking people to do seminars when they can't come to visit us. So we may have a couple uh, throughout the semester, probably from um, faculty and students that are here at Penn State. And uh, we'll cross our fingers and hope we can resume visitors coming here for uh, seminars of interest uh, next semester. So we'll, we'll see how we do with that. But um, you can go to the site, look at any recording you like. Um, there should also be on the overall CAV website a list of uh, previous seminars that aren't on YouTube, but they're uh, archived in uh, Penn State's uh, video system. It's called Kaltura, but it, that should all be transparent to you. You should be able to go back to the last few years of seminars. If you see something you like, you know, go ahead and watch it. They're about 45 uh, minutes long or so. A big thanks to our corporate sponsors. And I know a lot of you couldn't make it here live this time, but I really appreciate you being online. And if you're watching after the fact, I appreciate that as well. So the whole point of this is to reach out to you and uh, connect you with our faculty, connect you with our graduate students. Uh, that, that's tough to do online, but uh, if you see something you like, see a student post you're interested in, reach out to us. We're happy to talk to you anytime. If you're having trouble finding people, contact me. I'll make the connection. 
Um, this is all about outreach. And um, you guys hiring our students, uh, you guys potentially sponsoring, sponsoring research, this is all to help facilitate that. So here's a list of uh, current uh, sponsors, quite a few of them. And uh, again, we're, we're grateful for the sponsorship uh, that helps us put on this event. It's not free. And so uh, you know, we really appreciate the, um, the financial support. Got a couple of new ones that uh, just uh, joined. Uh, Cummins is uh, on board as a large sponsor because they're a, a huge organization. And uh, we're looking forward to interacting with them on a, a number of topics. And uh, General Motors has uh, got an offshoot uh, called Cruise, and they do electric vehicles. And uh, they're new uh, sponsors as well. I think a few of you guys are online, so welcome. Uh, looking forward to getting to know you, learning more about your problems, and, and seeing how we can, how we can help. <coughs> So for those of you that are not yet corporate sponsors and maybe guests, um, we encourage you to join, <laughs> obviously. Uh, we do have a page on the website that uh, tells you all the, um, the stuff you get, the main thing being access to our workshop, uh, as well as our seminars. And uh, there is a, uh, what do we call it? There's a, it used to be called a day of advising. And then uh, the Penn State lawyers didn't like that. So now it is a day of individualized educational guidance. <laughs> Right? All that means is you get a day to talk to us, faculty members, about your problems. We can help either point you in the direction of some research you may not have been aware of, uh, give you some resources, and in some cases, if you want to fund a research project, we can, of course, make that, that happen as well. Uh, here is an example of a pretty successful recent interaction with a corporation. This is Babcock and Wilcox. And uh, they're here today, so thank you for that. In fact, you'll hear more about this problem when uh, Tom Flynn uh, gives his talk uh, later on. Uh, but uh, this is uh, some work that uh, Tyler Dare and um, Jackie O'Connor and some others did to support a problem that uh, B&W is having with one of their boilers. Essentially, at uh, certain moments, you would get these big pulsations that would occur and a bunch of harmonics would appear and just kind of light up the entire building. Obviously not desirable. Uh, turned out to be a, kind of a thermoacoustic resonance issue. Uh, they were able to get a paper out on this, and there's some follow-up work that um, uh, Tom will talk about uh, later on. But uh, the neat thing here is that they were able to go off, uh, take a bunch of uh, Penn State equipment, mix that in with, I think, some B&W uh, equipment as well, and essentially instrument the entire boiler and just kind of wait for bad things to happen. So over on the right, <coughs> there are a bunch of accelerometers kind of surrounding the entire furnace. And um, over on the left, uh, they've got uh, a spectrogram of a uh, microphone at the, the inlet to the furnace. And there you can see all of these uh, tones are showing up, uh, but not all the time, right? So you can kind of see these stripes, horizontal stripes going up. Those are the harmonics. And every now and then they disappear. And then the firing rate changes and they reappear. Firing rate changes, they disappear. So that was an annoyance. Uh, over on the right again, all of the, uh, the red dots, that's just kind of showing you the overall deflection of the accelerometer. So the entire package boiler was just breathing in and out whenever these uh, events would occur. So they're able to track down what was going on, uh, suggest a potential fix. Uh, Tom will tell us whether that worked or not, <laughs> maybe, uh, during his talk. But uh, it was a great example of uh, some nice interaction between Penn State faculty and uh, a corporate sponsor. Right, so how can a corporation sponsor uh, some work here at Penn State? Well, there's a bunch of options. And uh, there's a list at the bottom there. It's uh, called the Penn State Funding Matrix. And it gives you all your options and uh, what uh, happens with IP and who owns what and uh, terms and conditions and all that fun stuff. Uh, the easiest, the absolute easiest is just an out and out gift. Um, the up one downside of that is you can't tell us what to do in theory. Uh, however, if you're interacting with a faculty member and you want them to do something, they're going to do what you ask them to do. It just can't be in a contract. It's, it's, just, it's a clean gift. Um, grants, there's a couple of those. So there's unrestricted and restricted. So uh, unrestricted uh, means that um, Penn State owns the IP. And a lot of corporations don't like that. And so they typically wind up going to restricted, which is fine. And then uh, Penn State owns IP with license to option. If you go to a contract, there's a little bit easier way of getting the IP to you only. Uh, the Penn State um, uh, IP folks many years ago, well, not many, but within the last 10 years, uh, changed the IP approach at Penn State. They used to be really hard line, like a lot of other universities are. 
Penn State owns all IP and we license it, and they've backed off on that quite a bit. So it's a lot easier to get IP assigned to a corporate sponsor now than it was before. And that whole point of that is to facilitate uh, work with, uh, with corporate sponsors. So we're flexible, we can make things happen. I know a lot of corporations have different legal issues, but I haven't found a case where we weren't able to make something happen if we really wanted to. So any problems, talk to me, we can help um, grease the skids and make things work. Along with our corporate sponsors, uh, we have a lot of government liaisons. Uh, they do not get charged uh, for uh, joining the CV. Uh, that's because uh, there's a lot of government research being sponsored here at Penn State. So it's just if you're government, you're in. Uh, corporations do pay a small fee. Uh, a lot of folks, so we've got a few people from um, NAVC uh, Card Rock here today, so, so welcome. A lot of other people that normally come, we're not able to because of travel restrictions, but we're hoping to welcome them back uh, next year. We also have some vendor liaisons. All that means is we get uh, kind of nice deals on instrumentation, hardware, software, things like that. And uh, we're grateful to them as well. And one of my favorite things about the CAV is our international liaisons. We've, we've built these up over the years, starting with Gary Koopman through George and now myself. Uh, just finding like-minded people around the world that are working in sound and vibration, flow-induced, vibration, you, you name it. And uh, these are a combination of uh, just research organizations as well as um, universities uh, that uh, we've cultivated over the years. And it's always a highlight of the workshop, to me anyway, and I think to a lot of our students, when uh, we see talks from these guys. Uh, last year was a bunch of Zoom talks, but I think it went pretty well. This year, um, since we're hybrid, a lot of the folks in uh, the, um, the Far East aren't really able to join us. I couldn't think of a way to do that, so I didn't really press them too much. So uh, Keist... Uh, Hong Kong Poly, uh, we'll hopefully hear from uh, them next year. Uh, the people in green were gracious enough to uh, pre-record some talks. The reason we pre-recorded them is you just don't know what's going to happen with Wi-Fi. So we didn't want them online with something going wrong and them having a problem with their talk. But they have pre-recorded some talks. They're on really neat topics, as usual. And uh, the way that's going to work is uh, when the time is up, uh, we'll play the talk. They'll be online, we hope. And uh, they should have access to the microphone so they can take questions uh, afterwards. So they'll, they'll be with us. It's just the talk will be pre-recorded and played. But, so KU Leuven, we'll hear from them. Insta de Leon in France, uh, DLR uh, in Germany, and uh, Sherbrooke up in uh, Canada. So look forward to that. I uh, should have mentioned this before, but we do have a couple of uh, talks from corporate sponsors. I did mention Babcock and Wilcox, but uh, Joe Lyons will uh, give us an overview of Harmon some of the research going on there. And so we appreciate that. Uh, agenda, we're gonna jump down to the agenda in a minute, but uh, a couple of more slides before that. But everything is on this software platform called Excel Events. And this is something that conferences and institutes subscribes to. It's pretty slick. Everything goes out streaming on there. For those of you that are online, you're obviously seeing that. Uh, for those of you here in the room, uh, the PDFs will be there. The um, final videos will be uh, uploaded there. Uh, you can find a few other things there as well, including a list of our student resumes. So a lot of our students are within about a year of graduating. So if you're looking to hire, you can find all of those there. I think there's about maybe uh, a dozen, 15, something like that. And uh, also all of the student posters, which we'll get to in a minute, are online as well. And we encourage you to have a look at those. <coughs> so today, we'll go to the agenda in a minute, but obviously we're here now, we'll have lunch. Uh, we'll have um, the big social and student poster competition uh, this evening, and that'll be at uh, Spike Stadium. Those are not students. That's just a screen grab I got from <laughs> a typical ball game. That's our minor league affiliate here in State College, but you can apparently rent out the stadium. So I figure that's an outdoor event. We don't have to walk around with masks on. Um, it's a beautiful evening. We got lucky. It's not always the case in State College. Uh, you might need a light jacket, but uh, we'll have plenty of food, a beer. Everyone is welcome, faculty, students, uh, please come, uh, take advantage of the opportunity to meet people, talk to each other. And a lot of you guys haven't talked to each other in a while, so this will be a fun opportunity. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have a bunch more talks, and uh, we'll wrap up at around uh, 3 o'clock. Those of you that have been here in the past, uh, we have had lab tours. I couldn't figure out a way to make that work this year, so we're foregoing the lab tours. But obviously, if you have any questions about our facilities, let me know. Any of our uh, group heads know, and we'll, we'll be happy to chat with you about them. 
Um, I believe the um, directions to Medlar Field should be in an email that you got from uh, Kelly uh, or Melissa with a no before you go. So there should be a link there. If you lost it, just type in Medlar Field or Spike Stadium in your Google and you'll find it. It's, it's near the Penn State Stadium, a little bit beyond it. It looks like a small baseball park. There's plenty of parking outside. You just walk on in. There should be signs. So once again, please join us. Uh, and I'll tell you again, students, faculty, this is not just for visitors. Anybody can come. We encourage you to come. Uh, the other thing about the student poster competition is um, in the past, we restricted judging just to our visitors because we have a lot of visitors, usually in the order of about 50 or 60 of them. That's not the case this year. Um, most visitors are online. So, so the students aren't just standing around lonely. We've opened up judging to faculty, so we encourage you to come. Uh, the only stipulation is don't judge your own student. <laughs> so try not to do that, but uh, please come around, chat with the students, learn about their work. Uh, on site, we will have evaluation forms. You know, they'll be handed out to you as you walk in. And uh, those of you online, uh, Kelly should be emailing you soon a, an online uh, form that you can use and you can just go on and e online and evaluate the posters yourself. We ask you to do that by a close of business on Friday so we can tally up the results and uh, send out the winners on uh, Monday. So for uh, students that aren't part of this, it's, it's kind of a big deal. We, we give out very generous awards. It's $1,000 to support going to a conference. I know not all conferences are live right now, so you can bank that for a conference next year or the year after that, whenever you want. Just, just whenever you want to go, get in touch with uh, Diane and uh, we'll make the arrangements to uh, pay for um, part of your trip, up to $1,000 worth. We are doing the short course this year. And uh, many thanks to uh, Jose Palacio, Sarah Greenwood, and Ken Brentner for putting this together. Uh, it's on a pretty hot topic. Essentially, it's drone noise. But uh, the more broad term for that is it's a mouthful, electrical vertical takeoff and landing of <laughs> vehicle noise. Uh, but they've got a bunch of uh, lectures as well as a fun in-lab demo for you. Uh, they have to do that in stages. We got a lot of people signed up for this, so uh, they're just going to kind of stagger the day so that some folks are getting lectures and some folks are going to the, um, the lab. And they've got a little facility set up. I, I believe that's part of um, Jose's talk later on, or maybe Eric's, to show you what it looks like. Well, there's a picture of it on the right. But uh, they got a nice little gimbal, uh, rotor craft fins on there, blades and uh, they can make noise, and or noise measurements in an anechoic room. So it should be a fun uh, short course. It starts at about uh, 8.45 in uh, 233A here. There will be lunch. We're bringing in, um, uh, I forget, uh, where's it coming from? Anyway, we're bringing in box lunches. I, I think it's a Panera. Yeah, that's right. So if you like Panera, great. If you don't, apologies. There are other options downstairs here in the hub, but um, uh, it should be a good uh, short course. So and thanks again to the folks for doing that. Um, I don't have a date for next year yet. Uh, we're still kind of evaluating uh, various um, conferences and other uh, things that are happening uh, to try to pick out the best date. We try to avoid conflicts as best we can, uh, but it will be most likely sometime in October again and uh, here as well. Uh, we like this new room. I hope <laughs> you do as well. It's a lot uh, more open than the uh, one we used to be at at the Nittany Lion Inn, and uh, hopefully the climate will be a lot better. We've always had complaints about the air conditioning at the uh, Nittany Lion Inn, but uh, hopefully things are good here. Um, so that's all from my overview. So uh, Kelly, if you would bring up the Excel events, just so I can do a brief tour of that. All right. So if um, you are not in here, um, you should have gotten an email, again, from conferences and institutes. If you didn't, I'm sure you got Kelly and Melissa's email by now to send them a note back. Hey, I lost it. How do I get to my link? Uh, but uh, this is where you go to find everything. Um, we've got uh, the live feed, which is obviously now. You've got all of the individual talks. And then you should start seeing PDFs show up as the talks happen. So my slides, for example, should be on there as well. And when the next uh, talk starts up, you see the slides as well. So you're welcome to download those. Uh, once again, any questions about the technical content, you know, let us know. We're, we're happy to talk to you. And I uh, believe the posters, let's see, where are the posters? Uh, there we go. Yep. So these are kind of neat. So you just be able to pick on each one. Right? And you've got a little abstract. You've got the actual poster itself. You can download them. And these are almost like papers. There's a lot of detail in these. Um, we are going to have all of our students lined up after lunch today. And uh, they're going to come up and give you uh, what we call two-minute elevator speeches. 
just to give you an overview of their work and to try to encourage you to stop by and to visit their posters. We have 20 of them. So I don't expect everybody to judge all of them. So we kind of use the elevator speeches to make notes as to which ones you really want to go see. So just go to the ones you want to see, uh, judge whatever you're willing to, and uh, we'll take it from there once we get all the evaluations in. But a lot of detail here if you want to look at that in your leisure. Um, student resumes, again, if you're looking to hire, you have to use that little password down below there, but it's, it's an easy one. <laughs> and uh, you can go see all of those. And I think that's about it. Uh, no, a couple of quick housekeeping notes. If you're watching this, or uh, excuse me, online, uh, we do not have microphone ability for you. So if you have a question, you're gonna have to type it into the chat. But uh, it's our job to monitor chat, so if you have questions, we'll uh, keep track on them and uh, we'll ask them of our speakers and uh, they should be able to answer them. If for some reason we miss your chat, just drop me an email with a question. We'll hook you up with a speaker. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, for those of you giving talks, I'm finding out that uh, the way we have this set up here, if I turn away, I've got to make sure I stay close to the mic. If I just turn my head, I might drop. So just try to stay close to the mic as you turn around so that the feed goes out to all the people that are listening to us. And I think that's it for housekeeping. <laughs>